And I'm, I'm no different than any other investor. I'm shocked at this. I, I can't even understand or fathom uh, the, the decision at all. It, it, there's no rationale for it. it New York was already a loser state, like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. Welcome back to the Fearless Future Podcast. We're your hosts, Glenn Schwarm. And Amber Schwarm. And today, we are here to talk about a word that's going to trigger some of you beyond belief, and some of you are going to perk up your ears and listen. And the word today is... Trump. Uh-oh. There, there we said it. <laughs> we have a word that's going to trigger some people beyond belief, and we want to dive in in light of what just recently happened this week with the verdict that was announced in the state of New York. We want to talk about how it's affecting real estate investors and investors in general and what it's going to do, we think, to business in New York that was already failing and already tough to do. And we really want to dive in and talk about it. So yeah. hot topic. Yeah. I want to talk about first Trump because this is not what what happened is going to affect people. It has nothing to do with politics. It's going to affect business. And there's no question about it. But what, what I really want to do is talk to people about why people in power get so crazy. Yeah. And I think people think, well, it's a judge, it's a lawyer. They should operate at a certain level. And correct me if I'm wrong, but people have this visceral reaction to Trump. Oh, yeah. They get very, very emotional about it. And it's like even even just saying the word Trump, they get their body language changes. And, it, and it, like you said, it doesn't matter how intelligent they are, how educated they are, what position they're in. Doesn't matter. It's this very, very strong reaction to another human being because of what they believe is like underneath it and, and the motives. But, you know, just because somebody's a lawyer or a judge doesn't mean they can't be bought or they're not crooked either. Well, so I don't even know about just being crooked. So that that could very well be. Now, we don't want to make this a political conversation today. It's going to be a little bit political in the beginning because we really want to tie this to real estate investing. But but it's not just that. I think that people, again, I looked up visceral to make sure that I really understood the meaning. And really the word visceral essentially means that you have such a strong opinion that it affects you emotionally. Right. You can't detach emotions from your opinion of the situation. Right. As you know, we're all human beings. And so when we get our emotions involved, like when you and I occasionally have ever had a fight once every five years. Oh, never. Yeah. So You're but, perfect, honey. Well, we could just end the podcast right here today. That's probably good. So, but I think that when people get their emotions tied to an argument, they want to win and they lose it. Well, something about Trump triggers people at the visceral level, right? At the soul level, they hate. Now, yeah. there's people that love him and people that hate him, right? They're very different. And there's people that are confused on what to do in the middle. That's all political stuff. But what I think is happening is that even highly educated people in New York, especially, hate him. I know this because we had a formal, former business we did business with, and the owner of that company yeah. was a very smart guy. Yeah. I enjoyed him. We we're friends. We still are friends. I could not mention the word Trump without him flying off the freaking handle. He would go off. He would go off and go, you know he's a crook. You know he's going to prison. And this is, this is six, five years ago. Yeah. And he would go nuts. And I'm like, dude, take, take a, a chill pill. pill. <laughs> I'm like, what are you? Take it easy, man. And so- when I saw him, I got thinking about other people in high up positions. We're all humans. Education doesn't mean common sense. Right. And money and status doesn't mean common sense. Right. Because once you lose it emotionally, you're out and you can't make good decisions. And I think that's exactly what happened in this case. So yeah. I, I think that it's like it's like logic goes out the window. And remember, people can buy into these cults. Now, now the Democrats say that Republicans are in a cult, and the Republicans say that Democrats are in a cult. Fine. However you want to look at it. The point is, smart people, what are you going to say? I don't, and I don't, I don't think they're cults, but they have cultish like I understand. Be, you know, well, vibes about them. But my point is, remember in Clifton Park, New York, where we lived? Oh, yeah. There was a big cult up there Nexium. called Nexium, right? Nexium. And that was in Clifton Park, right yeah. in our backyard in Total New York. Psycho guy. Yeah. He was branding women, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. There were a lot of smart, highly educated Hollywood yeah. type big dollar people that were involved with this yes. guy. Doctors and, and lawyers yes. and people in Hollywood. Yes. Yeah. Had no idea. Right. 
So the point is, high up people can get triggered, can get bought into you, you things. Can, you can fall victim to that line of reasoning. You can. Yeah. You can. And you can turn your eye at the facts. You turn your eyes away from the facts when you totally hate the person. It's so, like that hatred takes over. Yeah. And you can't so, think logically anymore. My my political, I just saw something on Bill Maher uh, this week, and they had a guest speaker on, and he said, they said, well, who are you going to vote for? And everybody's so nervous about what they're going to say. Oh, in this country, God forbid you say the wrong thing to the press. And he said, I would tell you to vote policy, not person. Right. Vote policy, not person. You know, I voted for Trump both times. I'm a conservative, yeah. been a conservative, you too. Yeah. We've been conservatives our whole lives. Yeah. I was uh, independent registered for years till I moved to Florida because- during COVID, I got to see how Democrats would actually run a state and the lengths they would go to to put masks on and shut businesses down and have no real concern for their people and completely hurt us. And I said, we have to go to a different state and live there. Yeah, I, I think what people really need to be careful of, though, is they might think, oh, that's Trump. That would never happen to me. But, mm -hmm. but this sets a precedent. This sets a precedent for them twisting a law to make yeah. it fit their agenda. Yes. Because, you know, that, that, that was like some obscure law that they found that they're... Nobody has been charged with it. We're for seven, it's been on the books for 70 years and they've never enacted on it. There's been not and, one person. And 70 I wonder, years. I wonder if when that law was written, if it was even intended for something yeah. like this kind of scenario. Yeah. Probably not. It's been so twisted yeah. to make it fit what they yeah. want to do. Yeah. So... I think people need to be careful, though, because this kind of thing does set a precedent. So if you think that can't happen to you, even if you have a small business or if you're just, you know, running your day to day life. Yeah. I want to dive into that and talk about um, if you decide to voice your opinion on politics and you're in business. I want to talk about that in this podcast. Yeah. But first, I want to just remind all of our viewers, in case you've been living in a rock and don't know what <laughs> happened, just really quickly, Letitia James ran for... Um, the attorney general of New York, <clears throat> her whole campaign was, I'm going to get Trump. That yeah. was like her thing. And again, that all, was her the, agenda. all the people that are triggered say, oh my God. And I, when I, we live in New York. So yeah. I was like, okay, that's what you're running on. That's your platform is that I'm going to get Trump. No matter what, I'm going to find a way to get Trump. And regardless if you are right now a liberal, you listen to this and going, oh my God, I'm so mad at him. Just listen to the facts for a minute. That was the platform that she ran on, right? Was to that, go get but Trump. But that's the problem. If you're that emotionally I know. triggered by this. You can't listen to the facts. Here's the what I facts... laugh about. I know, but here's what I'm going to say. The, the funny part for me is that in New York State, there's no other high crimes that the Attorney General should be going after except for one right. like that. Seriously? <laughs> of all the time yeah. and, and all the crime that's running rampant in New York City yes. and around the country and no bail reform, all the crazy stuff yeah. happening, right? And so, this, this is what you want to so focus anyways, on? Anyways, let's, let's, let's not get triggered ourselves, okay? Because <laughs> we, we know how we feel about all this. So we, like I said, we're conservatives. So so what happened was they had to find a way to find a law to charge him for fraud because they couldn't find any. They dug and dug and dug, couldn't find any. And they were able to use his valuations of his properties and saying that he fraudulently represented himself to lending op uh, banks, to mm -hmm. banks. And that because of that, they found him guilty with no jury, mind you. They found him guilty. Yep, just the judge. And the judge decided it was $355 million fine. $355 million That's fine. That's a nice little figure that you just pluck out of the air. Yeah. yeah. And well, I'll tell you how they got there in a minute. And then no business. He can't do business for three. He's barred from doing business for three years. One of his top generals is the same way. And the even his two children yeah. are barred for two years doing business in there. And they both had to pay $4 million yeah. fines, right? So it's been crazy. But- um, it, so the, you really want to piss somebody off? You start attacking their kid. Yeah. You see what's going to come out. Well, I think that what the, the thing that we want to talk about here again is how this all ties to real estate and how, how it, how it's going to affect and how it could affect people in real estate. And I want to talk about valuations. I want to describe kind of what we see happening from our point of view as real estate investors who actually I lived in New York State for 52 years. Yep, I lived there for 15. So we know what it's like doing Never want to go back. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no no, no kidding. And we still run a business that flips 100 houses a year right. in upstate New York. And we refuse to buy any more rentals up there. We have about 50 rentals. We refuse to buy any more rentals because of all this stuff. And because of the fact that now we could be prosecuted mm -hmm. for borrowing money. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy time that we're in. So I think that we should listen to this clip from Kevin O'Leary. You know, I'm a big Shark Tank fan. You, you know the kids and I like to watch that. Mm -hmm. And Kevin O'Leary said it best. So watch this clip from Kevin O'Leary describing businesses in New York State and what's, what's going to happen yeah. now because of this decision. Check this out. Kevin O'Leary back with us, O'Leary Ventures chairman, Shark Tank investor. 
You know, Kevin, you had mentioned, and it was a very profound kind of comment, that, you know, some of these other businesses do have right to be concerned, whether they like Donald Trump or not. Maybe you can elaborate on that. Well, this this award, um, I mean, just leaving the whole Trump thing out of it and, and seeing what occurred here, and, and I'm, I'm no different than any other investor. I'm shocked at this. I, I can't even understand or fathom uh, the the decision at all. It, it, there's no rationale for it. And so let me give you a real-time uh, experience I'm having regarding this, and I'm not the only one. It doesn't matter what the governor says. New York was already a loser state, like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. I would never invest in New York now, and I'm not the only person saying that. And here's a real-time situation. In development in real estate right now, the hottest asset class is very high-end data centers. They cost anywhere from two and a half to three and a half billion each. They are very expensive. They require low power. You need permits. But most of the major institutions in the world need more data centers, and that's why developers like me are doing this. Now, you need power. So New York has Niagara Falls. Normally, you'd consider that to put in one of these facilities, create 400 jobs, five more jobs for each of one of those for auxiliary services. I can't go to New York. So I'm going to Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia. Governor Stitt, Kevin Stitt, my staff have met with him. Governor Bergen, the same thing. Governor Justice, those are winner states. They don't do things like this. I have to syndicate that debt and all that equity. We're talking billions of dollars here. Do you think any foreign institution or any private equity firm or any pension fund would touch New York? No. And that's why New Yorkers should be concerned. The fine people of New York should ask themselves, why are we such a loser state? How are we going to attract business? It's not just the existing businesses that are fleeing out to Texas and Florida. What about new money like this that I'm talking about, like a $4 billion data center? Not a chance I would put that in New York. Zero probability. Never. And so they've got a lot of work to do to find themselves getting out of this situation. This has all occurred post-pandemic. Winner states versus loser states. Look at Tennessee right now, fastest growing city in America, Nashville. Winner state, good policy, competitive taxes. You've got to start thinking about this in the context of winners and losers. New York, mega loser state. So, Kevin, what did you think of Governor Hochul saying this is like a unique one and done because Donald Trump went too far and was so nefarious. Yeah. Uh, you guys, if you're just doing what you should be doing, you have nothing to worry about. But they're very worried about it. Yeah, we're very worried. Every investor is worried because where is the victim? Who lost money? This is some arbitrary decision a judge made. This policy and what this says, what does this say about the bar, the legal bar? in New York. Aren't they going to question this judge? What is this? $355 million and there's dollars as a, as a penalty and there's plus interest at 9% and there's no victim? I mean, I'm sorry, her, her words fall on deaf ears to everybody. There's nothing she can say to justify this decision. And this has nothing to do with Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. Forget about Trump. This is not a Trump situation. This is a New York problem now. The whole world is looking at this saying, what are you doing to yourselves? Well put. Kevin, always good chatting with you. Kevin O'Leary, following all of that. So again, we agree with him 100% on what he's saying. Yeah. I didn't even know what the data center, I didn't even know what that was. I don't either. Those guys operate at a whole different level. They do. Don't they, these billionaires, they operate at a different level. But that's the type of business that's saying no more. Like, yeah. I don't even want to go to New York State anymore. E even with the resources. Even with the resources you, like Niagara Falls, where it know, probably would be a good fit. They're like, screw it. I'm not going to deal with the politics there. Do you know what Hochul? Hochul is uh, the governor of New York that took place after... Lord Cuomo, Lord Cuomo was on there during all of yes. COVID and then had to step down because of sexual harassment. Right. And then Hochul took over and then she won the next election. Why they keep voting people in that, that drive business out is beyond me, but they keep doing it. And yeah. they don't, they just don't care. Hey, are you enjoying this podcast? If so, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe so you make sure you never miss anything in the future and turn on those notifications. But I wanted to read this quote because this is what Kevin O'Leary is talking about. 
She's currently doing her best to stop businesses from leaving. She's she's really saying this is a political decision. Yeah, I saw but, that. But she can't quite say that. I, I saw that. She said, I think this is really an extraordinary, unusual circumstance that law abiding and rule following New Yorkers who are business people have nothing to worry about because they're very different than Donald Trump and his behavior. Again, that is such a slippery slope, though, because what happens if all of a sudden you speak out? You're you're doing business in New right. York and you speak out and say something that they don't like. Are they right. just going to try to squash you like a little bug? Right. And and you don't have the power behind you that Donald I Trump does. I don't have does. the money and the power and the no, clout. He's, no, he's got the attorneys and everybody fighting for him. Do they you, may, you know, they may watch this podcast and say, "Let's shut them down." And we did, we we have nothing, we couldn't do anything. Right. We wouldn't have the money to fight them. No. You know, it's it's they're, unbelievable how they're much all powerful and they're just they're dominating. Yeah. Very unfairly, they're twisting and dominating and just doing everything for their agenda instead of uniting. So. Obviously, we believe it's 100% political, and everybody on the right believes that. And I believe a lot of people on the, on the left. If I you, do, too. If you have your eyes open for the fact, you're not just triggered by the word Trump. Right. You could breathe for a minute and take him out of the equation and say, right. what crime did he commit? What victim was there? What damages were there? And how in the world did you and get And were there three? truly damages? Right, there were. Because there weren't. There weren't. We have, they have witnesses for that. But And $355 million. And here's some of the facts. When you look at the amount, it, this is where it's hard to believe it's not political. Right? We have to tie this back to real estate. This is all about real estate because this is Donald Trump's a real estate investor, right? So this is all about our world. What's, so, what's scary about this is- Can I finish my thought or you just want to keep no, interrupting me? So go, I know. Go I, was, ahead. I was thinking about something. Well, go ahead. So, finish up by all means. So you know, you were, you were talking about how powerful they are and, and there's, there's the far left and then there's the far right. And those are the people that that get emotionally triggered and can't Correct. make those logical decisions. But Correct. then there are those chunk of people that are normal conservatives and normal liberals. And, and, right. and those are the people that hopefully can look at the facts and make yeah. decisions based on that. Right. So when you look at this case, though, one of the things that struck me was where did you put $355 million? So I read a lot of the uh, summary judgment or whatever it's called yesterday. I looked it up and I, I read it. And they're claiming that there was four or five different big deals that they did and that the money that they borrowed in these houses was the illegal part, which I still, it makes no logical sense to a real estate investor to me at all. And I'll, I want to explain that process in a minute. But it also occurred to me that they have full access to his, to his records. Right. So they know how much cash is available. As real estate investors, we don't have a lot of cash available. Right. It's all tied up in property. Right. Most real estate investors don't because they put it's their, invested. <laughs> right. They put their money back in real estate to avoid paying capital or paying taxes, taxes yeah. any kind of taxes, income taxes. So legally. So they put it back into real estate. So we don't have a lot of cash available. Like if right. you're if you're a big investor in the stock market, you know, you can get money in a day or two days. Right. It depends how much. If you want to cash out a billion dollars, it's gonna be you have to sell a whole company, maybe. Right. But for the most part, you can get access to your money pretty quick. Whereas a real estate investor, we we yeah, can. they they call it uh, cash poor and house rich. Yeah, yeah. So that's the way that's the way I'm sure that Trump is, and they they noticed that in his book. So they figure if we can we can assess a fine big enough, he because here's the law of it, he can't appeal until he puts up that fine. Mm -hmm. He has to put that fine up, or he has to put a bond in place. Which who's going to back that? I don't know. I don't know. And again, I mean, this is not possible. But this is not the path I want to spend on this on this podcast today because I want to talk about how we got here. One of the reasons I think that people hate him so much in New York is because I've heard this for years. And I've heard this personally in New York because we're, we're from upstate New York, but I've yep. heard it's trickled up. He's a big, he's a big company, He's a right? big player, yeah. And so we've heard this from other people that say, you know, I knew people that didn't get paid by him. That's a very common thing. Yep. I never heard that from employees. Who did I hear it from? Contractors. Yes. And can you remember years ago, you and I saying... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like, we, under, we understand. We do. And and that's not to say. That, that was your field. You should talk about yes, that. Yes. And that's not to say that we don't pay our contractors because we do. We pay them for the work that they do, though. So that that's one of my favorite sayings when I'm meeting a contractor is, I love to pay my contractors, but you have to complete the work in order to get paid. You know, right. you have to fulfill your end of the deal. You have to fulfill your end of the contract. And if you don't do that yep. for one reason or another, then I'm not going to pay you. So yeah. if, if there were contractors that didn't get paid, it's probably because they didn't hold up their end of the bargain. I remember watching one of these investigative shows that was, again, anti-Trump when they were going after him. Because the media, as we know, is really anti-him, mm -hmm. of course, most media. And this show was all about how people hadn't got paid. And I, I sat and watched two different stories. I forgot what network it was on. I forgot the details. But I remember, I remember distinctly that 
the guy was complaining about some tile work and some plumbing that hadn't been done or hadn't been done to his standards. And he didn't get paid. He was very pissed about that. And all I could think of was, that makes total sense to me. Yeah. And I'm a much smaller level, right? We're doing houses. He's doing, you know, giant, huge hotels and buildings. But if something's not done right, the contractor doesn't, he said, well, it just really devastated my business. Well, guess what? Do your work. So yeah. Donald Trump is probably, his company is probably a much harder person to work for because he demands perfection. Look at yeah. his look at his, his real estate. They're beautiful. Look at his yeah. real estate. It demands perfection. We didn't always demand perfection, and we should have. But we lived in a small town where we worked in, where if you fire this contractor, and people they people talk. got around and said, they don't pay, Glenn and Amber don't pay. And, and the first thing we'd say is, we don't pay if the work's not done. Right. And, but we weren't even that hard, we weren't even that hard-nosed about right. it. We were, but we were pretty reasonable about settling with people, where I think Trump had the money and the resources to say, Nope, not paying you. See you later. Yep. And he didn't have time to, to mess around. So he hired somebody else and got the job done. So they start. So the, a, a layman who's not in real estate investing says, oh, he doesn't pay his bills. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's fraudulent. And that's where this started years ago. And I, that's what I've heard from people. He doesn't pay people around town. I'm like, I'd like to know more details he, on he who he doesn't pay. He would never have built the empire that he oh, has built yeah. if he was screwing everybody, though. For sure. So that's, that's where it started. Yeah. Now. I think we should talk about how valuations work because I don't think that of the average person necessarily understands this in detail. And we know this world well. Right. doesn't matter if it's single family homes or if it's multi-billion dollar properties. It all works the same. Right. And, you know, we've, we've borrowed, I don't know, well, however many dollars, a lot, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, yep. not billions, but tens of millions of dollars. And so we, we know this world rentals. well. Yes. We know it well. We've been through this process. We, we currently own 50 rentals. We've been through this process at least 50 times um, for our, our rental units. Right. And here's how it works. It's very simple. When you apply to do what's called a cash out refi on a property, meaning that you own this property and you want to take cash out on the property. Let's just say that's the, what you're doing. You go to the bank and you say, you fill out an application. And you say, here's my financials. Here's my tax returns, which are tax returns. Here's my personal financial statement, which shows all your assets, all your liabilities, and then what's left over. What's left over is your net worth, whether it's negative or positive. If you have more assets than people that you owe money to, that's a positive net worth. But it's all based on valuations of properties, where if you own stock, it's very clear that particular day, right. but that changes every day depending on the stock market, yep. Up or down. but you, you know what your worth is that day. As a real estate investor, it is an educated guess mm -hmm. done with an appraiser. An appraisal is, a, is an estimate of what that property will sell for. Because like we say, a property is only worth what someone's willing, willing and able, to pay, willing and able to pay for it. And do you know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. So, you know, there's, there's when you buy a house and the next door neighbor says, oh, I would like to buy that house. That doesn't mean they're able to buy that house. Right. That means yeah. that they would like to buy it, but they may not have the credit or the money to yeah. be able to, to actually purchase a house. So, they so have willing able. and able yeah. means they have the desire to purchase it and the ability to purchase it financially. Yeah. So in this case, we would go to the bank. They would then send an appraiser, a third-party appraiser. Now, it has to be someone that they don't know and they don't have any contact with. That was implemented back in 2008. Yeah. Somebody that own. doesn't have a vested interest in the property. Right. It needs to be totally... Separate. All that fraudulent lending that happened, yep. there was people that were in each other's pockets back in 2007. Right. We started in 2008, so we didn't know all that yep. world. And but that's, that's what happened with the real estate crisis then. Correct. So now you have to have a third party company go out and do an appraisal. An appraisal is just an educated guess. But it's not just a guess. They they base it on it's comps. Educated like, guess. It, it is an educated guess, but they, they base it on facts. They base it on comparable sales right. that are in the neighborhood that are similar properties. So there's still, even though these big properties, big, you know, that, that Trump has, there's still properties that they can use to yep. base their educated decision right. on. And larger, larger commercial properties have different, they have a thing called cap rate. I won't dive down that yep. hole today, but it really just depends on how much income the building bill brings in uh, and how much that will determine how much the property is worth. So long story short, if there's a calculation to figure out how much a property is worth, when we do that, a bank goes out and they send an appraiser. Appraiser goes back and says, here's the amount of this house. We'll loan you 70% of that amount. So if we had a house that was worth, for easy math, $100,000, the bank would loan us $70,000 on that house. 
Consequently, if you had a building that was worth 100 million, they might loan you 50 million. I don't know what they what they loan at those higher levels. It's probably not full 70%. Yeah. But they, they have criteria that they will loan you money on for those properties. They claim that he overestimated the value of his properties. Well, number one, we always think our properties are worth more than the bank thinks. That's just the way that it works. Every now and again, we're surprised. Yeah. But most of the time, we think a house or a property is worth X, Y, Z dollars. We say it to the bank. The bank says, good, don't really care what you think. Yeah. I'm going to do my we're going own, to do our own assessment, my own third party investigation and decide what we're going to loan on based on my outside person's evaluation. And that's how it goes. And that's exactly what happened in this case. And the judge, the one property that he keeps bringing up or he kept bringing up that he a lot of the fine was from was he borrowed so much money on Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago. Only I've seen pictures. I know. It's amazing and huge. We live on the intercoastal and our house is, is a few million dollars, right? This is a property that is 25 acres in West Palm Beach. Yeah. It's, it borders the Atlantic Ocean and, and the, intercoastal. the intercoastal. So it has water on both ends. I, I probably have the numbers a little bit incorrect, but it's around 70 something bedrooms. It's insane. Yeah. 53 bathrooms. Yeah. It's a complete, it has a whole center. I mean, it's a, it's a commercial property. It's enormous. What they're trying to do is find some glitch in the law that say that he borrowed that as a, as a residential. It's not really, it's more commercial, you know, very technical things that lawyers twist to get their way. And New York's full of lawyers and they're happy to twist anything. Yep. And so the judge says that's worth $18 million. That is laughable. Now I've seen on the news, they're showing like properties that are right nearby that are, that far surpass that number. The, they're much smaller properties too. Right. They're much smaller properties and they're, we're talking about. But the value on them. Th is they're nice properties. Tremendously more. Two, there's a house for sale right now that's around $200 million. Beautiful home. It's not 25 acres on yeah. both sides that, that has tennis courts and bathrooms. And it's not that grand. Mm -hmm. It's, it is by far one of the nicest homes probably in the world. No question about it. And so I understand it's tough to put a valuation on it. And whether, you know, Trump says 1.5, but he can certainly exaggerate. You know, the, the one thing that I love his policies and I love where our country was financially during his presidency. I did love all that. I didn't love the barking, the name calling, the, you know, yeah. he, he, he's not very presidential, as right? As him so as a you, person, you have to take the good with the bad. Yeah. As far as him as a person, he can act kind of childish and throwing right. sand in the sandbox. Net. But. On the same token, if you are constantly attacked over and over and over the way that he is, yeah. you know, you might come out with you're right. This <laughs> right. So, so in this case, he was saying, "Hey, my property is worth 1.5 billion." Now, whether it's worth 1.5 billion, I don't know. It's definitely not worth 18 million. Yeah. Like I said, our property is about three million, and it's a you know we have a you know 4,000 square foot on a half acre of land, right, right? on the intercoastal. Right. We can walk to the ocean, but it's not. But I mean. To think, just to extrapolate that out and then go down south further into West Palm Beach, it's insane yeah. that, that, that the judge says 18 million. Where'd you get that number from? Well, he got it from, from the tax assessment. So many years ago, that was the tax assessment on the property. As you know, you can, be, you can yeah. have your what, tax before assessed. Before there was ever a building on it? <laughs> well, that, but wait, many years ago, I don't know the exact dates, yeah, but I many know. years ago, that's what it was assessed at. Yeah. And assessments don't always change in Florida. Right. So it just depends. So he went off that. My point is, he's not. Yeah, you, you never buy a house based on the assessment. No, he's not a he's not a real estate investor, and yeah. to and to come up with that that amount in his head, and to I, be that clueless to think that people think that that's how it works. Therein lies what I started this podcast with by saying that even good people that have a lot of education and a lot of money behind them and a lot of clout doesn't mean they have any common sense because once they get jaded and once they have hatred in their heart for somebody. They've made a decision that that person's guilty no matter what. Yeah. And they're going to find a way to make that person guilty. And the scary part is they have the power to do it. Yeah. So that's what's really happened in this whole situation. The bank's perspective, you know, the, I believe it was the president of Deutsche, Deutsche Bank came in there and was a um, witness. Right? Wit, thank you. Witness for the Trumps. Mm -hmm. And he, they said he borrowed the money. He paid us back early. We got all of our money. The banks made money. The investors We'd made money. We'd love to loan to them again. Yeah. And the judge says, no, nah, it's fraudulent. And it's like. Says who? What are you talking about? It's fraudulent. I don't, I don't understand. So they found this obscure law that Donald Trump's original estimate, his own estimate, 
was higher. And that was, he was trying to be fraudulent. And that's the law, I believe, that they are claiming that he did something. It's not unlike you would do any listener here, if they went to the bank and they needed to take money out on their house yeah. and they didn't agree with an appraisal, they would go back and say, here's what I think the appraisal is right. and here's why I think You'd that. Fight it. You'd fight it. And whether he did or not, that's a negotiation that goes on. We fought plenty of appraisals. Sure. We lose most of them. But because the appraiser is always right. The bank says, here's what I think it's worth. Here's what I'll loan on it. So it's crazy. But the, the president was definitely his, he was in his corner. And that's the guy he borrowed the money from. So it's, it's crazy. So what does it all mean for us in New York State? I, you know, again, I say us. We don't live there. Thank God. And I'm not going to buy any more. We, we talked about this two years ago. During COVID, when they sh when the 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 red or the blue state rather strong blue state, you know, it's funny. We lived in upstate New York that was a lot less blue, right? But downstate controls that entire state. Most yeah. people think that New York. Our state, vote didn't matter. No, we we whenever we voted our conservative vote, it was just like throwing the trash. We ha I did it because it's my it's my my right, and I and I want to exercise my right to to do that. But we knew that in a blue state, New York City picks the winner of the every state time. All, every time. That's why they pick, they pick Democrat over and over, even though crime is high and immigration is through the roof. And now they're complaining, oh, we have too many people in our city. Well, no kidding. You did it. Well, crime is high. No kidding. You did it. And it's been it's been worse since COVID. Now I'm getting triggered. I know. So but, Calm down. But, I, but, I, but I'm just saying that, that they are now driving businesses out. So we are another business that is migrating out. We took our, our coaching education business out. Our rental business, our flipping business is still there. We are looking to expand that though to Florida. If that does well. We may just move the whole operation down there. Yeah, I mean, it's not a landlord-friendly state at all. During COVID, they put the, uh, you know, people didn't have to pay rent, and yeah. the landlords just had to foot the bill. Yeah. It, it was awful. I think that, you know, when 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 Hochul came on and said that, when she said, uh, hey, we have to, you know, it, it's okay, like what you read before. I, I think, you know, it's okay for regular businesses. What she's saying is, we went after that guy. Yeah. So just, you're okay. You're okay. But that makes it. But you're not. God forbid, God forbid that I, and I would never would, but I'm living in New York. I'm a business owner. I own real estate and I go into politics mm -hmm. and I'm on the conservative side. Or you have a family member that goes into politics. Right, right. What, what if our son goes into politics? What if our son, please Dakota, don't go into politics if you're listening to this, but what if he, if he, if he decides to go into politics and wants to be big shot and run for a state senator and all of a sudden the Democrats, the left say, let's pull up dirt on mom and dad. Yeah. And even though we don't have dirt, they're going to go find and say they they said that their house is worth more money. Yeah. And even though the bank gave them money, they're in trouble. And now they they try to put a black eye on us and we wouldn't be able to fight that. Well, and it, it's, it's no different than like what you see in the movies when, you know, they they capture somebody and they're trying to get them to do something they want. They go after their family members. Yeah. And it, hurt them yeah. to get people to do what they want. You it's know, nothing honestly, but manipulation and dishonesty and coercion. Yeah. Obviously, Trump is going to appeal this case. Yeah. And yeah, but good luck with that because that all works? the seven judges yeah, on the appellate before. court are are were picked by Hochul and uh, somebody else. Hochul, in the... Hochul and, and Cuomo. Right. They so they're all they're all they're all Democrat. Yeah. They're all liberal. Yeah. So you think he's going to win that case? Yeah. It'll have to go to Supreme Court. Right. And I, I don't know all the legal, you know, uh, pathways to get where they have to get. But the fact that he has to put up three hundred fifty million dollars before he can even get there. And they're just trying to bury him. They're trying it. to break him. They are. And make him go broke. And and they're trying to bury him in legal mumbo yeah. jumbo. And a, a lot of them he has to like be present for. Right. But they are. And by, by this law, and this again, take Trump out of the equation. We talked about Trump a lot here, but I but I it's because he's a real estate investor. Yeah. And because we understand at a much, much lower level what he's dealing with. I mean, like a minute, like we're we're not even we're in preschool compared to the level that he works at. Right. With real estate. But the same principles are true, because if you apply that same logic. To what they did to him, they could do it to anybody. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. I they they've proven that they can do it to it's anybody, control. and it proves that they will do it to anybody. Yeah, that gets and in their way. I don't know about you, but I say to myself, "Oh, they would never do that." Like I I live in I live in America. Like they they would never do that. But then I look back again. My logic brain goes back to COVID and says, "But there, they did." There are people that there are people today. We just saw one coming here. The driving alone in their car with, with a, a mask, mask on. on. And so they, the, those states, the things that we thought could never happen in America happened mm -hmm. in many of the blue states, California and New York especially. Yep. And that's what's been this mass exit of people leaving. But I think that if you look at that logic, 
anybody who's a real estate investor, even doing one house, is guilty. Yeah. So. Or could, could be, if, if they want to point their finger at you. Yeah, they can do whatever they want to yeah. do. I think that's the scary part for everybody yeah. in New York State. So I think if you're if you're concerned, get to a, get to a, do what we did. Get to a red state. Get to a red state. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy to do that. It, you know, you started this today by saying, is it, you know, a dangerous precedent? Yeah. It's It's incredibly dangerous. Because I think, like you said, if, if it's not overturned and it goes through, first off, who knows what's going to happen to Trump, that he's got his own problems he has to worry about. Certainly, I hope that he can, he can fight through all this nonsense. But because they've been after him for six years since he started, right? Yeah, and, and, and just like Kevin O'Leary said, this isn't about Trump. No. This is about what's going on with yeah. the twisting of, of laws and how it can affect you if, yeah. they, if they decide to go after you. And I want to leave people with this thought. You know, you should be very worried no matter what side you're on. Very true. Because at the end of the day, your par your party won't be in power forever. Mm -hmm. It will switch eventually, unless you're just controlling elections and doing that, which I hope that's not happening. But unless that's what if, you're doing. If that continues to happen, I think we're going to have bigger problems. I agree. But But my point is. You should be very, very concerned with the state of where we are right now. Yep. If that can happen to an individual, whether you like him or not, what he did was not illegal because all of us real estate investors do it on a regular basis. And if you say, well, then maybe you're legal too. No, that's, no, it's that's standard how, business practice. That's how business is done. Yeah. And so it makes absolutely no sense. And so if it's allowed to go through and it stands, there will be repercussions for New York State and other blue states that start to threaten these things that I believe will hurt those hurt those states immeasurably. Yes. Right right now, I don't know how true it is because you can't believe social media all the time, but I did see that all the truckers are starting to have a boycott to not bring supplies into New York City. Have you seen oh, that? Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh yeah, I've seen thousands of them saying we're not going to bring stuff to New York City. So they just not, they're going to show them what it's like not to have supplies brought in. Now, I don't again, do I want the country to go into some kind of a civil war? No. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. But that feels like the direction we're heading with this. So just be very careful and understand that this this is a lot more than just real estate. This kind of shows what they can do. Yeah. And I think we have to be very, very careful going forward. As a real estate investor, I think you have to do the best you can. You know, if you want to keep buying rentals in New York, God bless you. Godspeed. But I think you should be very, very aware of what can happen to you. That's like that saying, be careful what you wish for because it just might come true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that most real, most real estate investors aren't liberal. Most of them, by and large, are conservative and yeah. capitalists. That's how most of us are. And again, I have no problem with anybody who's a liberal. I, I love to have open conversations as long as we can have conversations where you don't get triggered and lose your ever-loving mind when I say the word Trump. Yeah. Right? So as long as you don't have that, I'm, I love having open conversations with people to see their point of view. Absolutely. But you've, you've got to be aware that if you are not careful and you support what's happening right now, that there'll come a day it'll turn on you yep. and they'll start going after your political opponent and going after you for your political belief. And you might say, yeah, but I'm a liberal. Well, you know what? Maybe someday things switch and maybe you're on the other side. And I think that we, we are in America should be a free country. Yes. We're all about freedom in a free country. And right now it, it sure doesn't feel free. Nope. So be careful and buyer beware in New York State. That concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. Make sure that you like this video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this podcast and hit those notifications so that you never miss a beat. And hey, we really want to know what you thought of this episode. So make sure you leave comments below. 